should have it. And it's uh, verses one to nine. Okay, perfect. We are like. All right, assalamu alaikum everyone and bismillah. So in, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, I want to welcome you all tonight to the virtual iftar with Minister Monty McNaughton. He is Ontario's Minister of Labour, Training and Skills Development. Uh, the minister is actually no stranger to Mac. Uh, in fact, we consider him a friend and someone who's always been really supportive of uh, the community, the organization, and just the Muslim community in general. We really look forward to hearing some of the remarks followed by an open discussion. Uh, about issues related to the Ontario government and the ministry. Uh, so my name is Layla Ahmed and inshallah I'll be tonight's uh, moderator. Uh, to begin, I would now like to welcome our Olive Grove School uh, grade four student. His name is Sam Musab, and he will begin our program as per our religious tradition with recitation from the Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل أتى على الإنسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا إنا خلقنا الإنسان من نطفة أمشاج نبتليه فجعلناه سميعا بصيرا إنا هديناه السبيل إما شاكرا وإما كفورا إنا أعتدنا للكافرين سلاسل وأغلالا وسعيرا إن الأبرار يشربون من كأس كان مزاجها كافورا عينا يشرب بها عباد الله يفجرونها تفجيرا يوفون بالنذر ويخافون يوما كان شره مستطيرا ويطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما وأسيرا إنما نطعمكم لوجه الله لا نريد منه كم جزاء ولا شكورا. So much, Assam. That was amazingly beautiful. Uh, for the translation, um, is there not a period of time when each human is nothing yet worth mentioning? For indeed, we alone created humans from a drop mixed of mixed fluids in order to test them. So we made them hear and see. We already showed them the way, whether they chose to be grateful or ungrateful. Indeed, we have prepared for the disbelievers chains, shackles, and a blazing fire. Indeed, the virtuous will have a drink of pure wine flavored with, cam with camphor from a spring where Allah's servants will drink flowing at their will. And they are those who will, who will fulfill their vows and fear a day of sweeping horror and give food despite their, their, their desire for it to the poor, the orphan, and the captive saying to themselves, we feed you only for the sake of Allah, seeking neither reward nor thanks from you. And uh, now we would like to acknowledge uh, that the proportion of Turtle Island, we now call Canada, has been home since time immemorial to the ancestors of the First Nations, the Métis and the Inuit people. And we recognize that in this territory, uh, indigenous rights holders have endured historical oppression and continue to endure inequalities that have largely resulted from the widespread failure of non-Indigenous treaty people to hold up their responsibilities. And we accept that it is our responsibility to acknowledge the territories on which we work, we live and we celebrate as a necessary first step toward honoring the original occupants of Turtle Island. Um, so a little bit about MAC. Uh, so MAC is an independent, nonpartisan chari Canadian charitable organization. Um, so our organization is really devoted to educational, social, charitable, faith-based, and nonprofit work. 
We are a national coast to coast grassroots organization. Uh, you know, MAC is a positive force to, for change in our society uh, by promoting engagements of Muslim within the wider society. And we build bridges and cooperation with other communities and organizations that share our goals and values. We also work towards communicating our understanding of Islam as a moderate, balanced and constructive way of life within the community and beyond. Uh, so currently we actually serve over 100,000 people annually. Um, we have about 13, uh, so we have chapters in 13 cities. We have 18 centers and mosques, 28 schools across Canada. We employ over 1,000 people and we have over 2,500 full-time students and over 10,000 10, part-time students in our school, mashallah. So, uh, you know, just uh, quite a lot about, uh, about MAC. Um, First, I would now like to invite uh, the MAC's Executive Director, uh, bro Brother Sharaf, Sharaf Iddin, to share a few words. Uh, Sharaf Sharaf Iddin is a husband, proud father of four, uh, and he's a leading community, community organizer. He is uh, one of the found, among the founding generations uh, and pioneers who shaped the Islamic work in, uh, in Canada. And as the founding member of the, of the Muslim Association of Canada of MAC, he has been a part of the organization since its beginning. And now he currently serves as the executive director under, and under his leadership, um, the organization has grown to be uh, the, the largest Muslim organization in, in the country in Canada. Uh, he is an engineer by profession and he's completed his MBA from the University of Ottawa and currently resides in Mississauga. So I'll leave the, the floor to you, Shalaf. Well, I think you're Hi. muted. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful. Karamadan uh, Karima, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and I would like to uh, thank you uh, specifically uh, Minister McNaughton and uh, MPP, Minister Khalid. Uh, I have to be, we have to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the great, for the work that Mac accomplished in the last 20 years. Uh, uh, our grassroots, the years of community grassroots work, uh, work has helped Mac engage quickly when the pandemic hit right across the country to address food insecurity, uh, youth mental health and community spiritual support and services. Uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, MAC has been uh, keen on mobilizing its grassroots base and pooled resources to be part of proactive community response. Uh, for example, our cost-to-cost -cost food share program, virtual programs, blood drives, and mosque through opening best practices. Uh, over the last several years, MAC leadership has provided uh, advisory to a different level of government on public policy that impacts the Canadian Muslim community. Uh, Minister, uh, you have been a strong partner with community organizations, including MAC, and we really appreciate that your government has been listening and working with us. There are uh, some important accomplishments that deserve to be acknowledged. Uh, we are grateful to uh, your leadership in arranging the PPE donations to several faith-based independent schools including the 10,000 worth of MAC, uh, worth for MAC uh, school. Uh, the 200 per child in, in, in COVID support to every student, regardless of public or private schools, allowing children in faith-based independent schools to get funding. This has been recent, recently doubled uh, for families. And we really appreciate that. On the issue of Islamophobia, uh, the premier spoke out strongly uh, against attacks on MAC mosques. The government condemned the correct shooting on the January 29th anniversary and supported a motion brought by the NDP to condemn Bill 21 in Quebec and call for it to be repealed. Uh, despite uh, places of worship effectively being closed right now, at the beginning of the pandemic, your office worked closely with MAC to develop a reopening strategy. I should share with you, while our mosques were open and following the measures that MAC enforced, there has not been a single case or outbreak in any of our mosques across Canada. Uh, if, there is, uh, and there's, if there is a way for the province to uh, create a single day exception for eight prayers, 
and allow between 15 to 20 attendants, this will go a long way for the Muslim community. Uh, Minister, you and the Premier has, have offered leadership for the province at a very difficult time, uh, and, and we'd like to thank you for your tireless efforts. As you know, my uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim community is a significant community in Ontario's diverse population. We look forward to our continued cooperation with the government. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shala, for a nice introduction. So I think for now, we're going to really jump right into it. I'm uh, going to take our, our time now with uh, with the minister. So as mentioned by, uh, by Shala, um, the minister has really been a friend uh, to the Muslim community uh, for several years. He's taken the time to visit, listen to the community um, in, our, in our organization. And uh, when the pandemic hit, he really worked tirelessly to make sure that the community institutions like Olive Grove um, had access to PPEs. And we are honored to host this virtual talk for the minister uh, so that we can continue building relationships with him and, and you know, to kind of keep that ongoing crop cooperation for a better Ontario. Um, and I am honored to welcome Minister McNaughton. So you have the floor. Well, thank you very much. Good evening, uh, everyone. I'm, I'm really honored to be with all of you um, and, and just grateful to be with you uh, as your community continues its observance of uh, Ramadan. Um, I also want to begin by just thanking uh, my colleague. Uh, he needs no introduction here, but a friend uh, to, to everyone and just someone I work really, really closely with, uh, MPP uh, Khalid, who's uh, on the call as well. I know uh, somewhere uh, out there, Cleed, thank you for everything you're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got a busy home with uh, a, a big family, but you give selflessly of, of yourself to so many people. Um, I also want to just say how proud I am of your community. You've contributed so much um, during COVID-19 uh, to the well-being of Ontario and uh, Canada. Uh, you've looked out for your neighbors and put the uh, vulnerable uh, first, especially through uh, this time period. Whether through sacrificing public worship, uh, donating to food banks to help those uh, in need, or running meals to those isolating, your communities really uphold the Ontario spirit. Also, and I know it wasn't mentioned earlier, but Mac has done an outstanding job at um, partnering with uh, the provincial government to ensure that we uh, have mass vaccination uh, clinics uh, set up, uh, especially in Toronto and Peel. So that's certainly been uh, helpful and is certainly going to help us get out of uh, this pandemic. And one of my uh, favorite moments, and it's been mentioned a couple of times already uh, during the last year was when I got to uh, visit uh, one of your schools with uh, MPP Khalid and to drop off uh, the PPE. I'm a, I'm a really strong supporter of uh, your schools and, and independent schools uh, in general. Um, I, I got to visit uh, a number of uh, Muslim schools across the province over the last couple of years, but that one, you know, just really is uh, uh, amazing. So thanks for all the work you do um, and lots, lots of growth happening there uh, as well. So it's really uh, encouraging to see. Finally, um, I, I just want everyone to know my door uh, is always open. Uh, ben Lamb is on the call with us tonight from uh, my office. We've worked really, really closely with uh, Mac and we're going to continue advocating on your behalf for the safe reopening uh, of mosques and in all places of worship. And uh, yeah, I just want you to know that my door is always open. I'm going to continue my advocacy for the Muslim community and um, we'll work with uh, MPP Khalid and others to ensure that your voice is always heard uh, within the provincial government. So with that, I'm uh, looking forward to taking questions for a bit and, uh, and listening to you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Minister McNaughton. Um, but I'm just gonna pivot to, to Khalid and just kind of quickly introduce him. Uh, so Khalid, he's actually the MAC Director of Khaled Azez is the MAC Director of Communications and Education, and, and uh, he's here to share some thoughts on our most re recent project with the Ontario government. So, Khaled, the floor is also now yours. 
Okay, thank you, Laila. Uh, thank you, Minister McNaughton, for uh, being with us here tonight. Thank you, MPP uh, Rashid. Uh, we're always uh, uh, happy and uh, uh, excited to have you uh, with us in all in all our encounters and in all our projects. So uh, we have uh, more and more friends with the with the ministry uh, with the with the government of Ontario. And uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get a pop-up call from uh, from the premier tonight, like last year. Maybe maybe we'll uh, schedule that later. Uh, Minister McNaughton, uh, you highlighted uh, basically the role that the ministry played, uh, uh, that we the, the role that you created for our community to be part of the uh, mosque reopening, and we we really value that uh, type of partnership where. Uh, uh, our community, our voices are taken seriously and integrated into important issues that uh, actually directly affect our community. And we hope that this uh, this effort continues. Uh, the pandemic and the challenges are dynamic and changing, and our doors are open and, and our offices would love to uh, continue to coordinate around these uh, our, around these issues and, uh, and, and more. Uh, uh, specifically, uh, hopefully, as this uh, as we're out of the pandemic, there will be more recovery work that needs to be done uh, in places of worship, in in schools, in uh, businesses, and so on. And we're more than ready to uh, to be part of uh, thinking and planning for this uh, phase as well. Uh, I, uh, as Leila introduced, also the successful uh, launch of the mobile clinic at the MAC ICCO. And Ms. Saga was a very good, another good example of partnership between the province, the municipality, the community organizations, and it was really very well received by the community. And uh, uh, everybody actually stepped up from volunteering. We had over close to 200 volunteers now who are uh, uh, servicing this and and wanting to be part of the part of the story where where basically Canadians are helping each other be safe and helping each other get out of this pandemic uh, together. And and we really want to build on this. Uh, these uh, these kinds of uh, partnerships uh, uh, so that I don't take uh, too much time. I actually want to introduce who's on the call today so that you're aware also several of our leaders are uh, present today and uh, and they I know I learned that you have to leave earlier uh, uh, today so uh, we'll start the conversation and continue uh, and continue as well. Uh, so we have uh, 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 Leila introduced herself. She's on the Mississauga chapter. We have the chapter head um, Mr. Rokhaz Shafiq uh, we have uh, also uh, Sister Farzana Magani from uh, uh, the Toronto chapter, uh, Mr. Abdul Latif Bakbak, who is the principal of Olive Grove School, where you uh, had your press conference and you announced the support with the PPE uh, equipment, and that was very much appreciated by the community. Uh, well, Mr. Sharaf Din is already introduced as the executive director. We also have uh, Ahmad Atiyah, who is uh, who's a proud member of our community and also serves as the uh, uh, chair of the Peel Services uh, Police Board. We have uh, Sarah Atiya, who is on the executive committee of MAC as the youth director. And we have Mr. Asif uh, Manzoor, who is the ch uh, chapter head in uh, Waterloo, in the Waterloo region. And of course, uh, our younger, youngster Assam from uh, uh, from the school. We also have Maryam Mania, who is the public uh, relations manager, and Mustafa Al Hushi, who is supporting us on the back end here. So all our active people around around you in the GTA Toronto. We're, we extended the invitation to London, Ontario as well. So uh, where you come from? So uh, so uh, we're 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 all around. And uh, before we get into the questions, we would love to have our. Uh, Champion in this government, uh, MPP Rashid, if you want to share a few a few words before we get to the questions. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Oh. Can you hear me? Okay, all good. I just wanted to cut. Uh, Jazakallah khair, uh, brother Khalid, and uh, assalamu alaikum to everyone. Uh, definitely, it's an honor to be with you all this evening, and uh, thank you, uh, Minister, uh, for uh, for joining us this evening. I actually sometimes. I, I call uh, Minister, uh, you know, Brother Monty because he is truly, he's truly like a, a brother to me, and you know, I, I learn a lot from him uh, and and continue to to learn. So so thank you so much, uh, Minister, for joining us uh, this evening. And uh, honestly, thank you so much to Mac for organizing this event and uh, your countless uh, volunteers for ensuring that um, we have a successful event tonight. And I have personally seen uh, the incredible work that Mac is, is doing minister and especially um, as uh, Brother Khalid and everybody just mentioned about the pop-up clinic. I think uh, they, they have like over, I would say 
50, 60 volunteers who are there since uh, morning and till late at night. And uh, you know they are uh, they are doing their part, and I always say their part is to giving giving back to the community, and this is the best thing about uh, Mac. And as a proud uh, uh, father of five kids, out of which uh, three of them are Olive Grove students, and and I'm sure uh, sooner than later the fourth and the fifth one. Uh, uh, by the way, Minister, just to let you know that uh, my uh, kid number five. Uh, I had to put him on waste, wait list before he was born. So this goes to show you <laughs> the, the competition out there. And uh, the, the, the thing is that they asked about date of birth and I was like thinking, what date of birth should I put? Because I don't even know. But you know, this goes to show you the, the incredible work that the school and not just only Olive Grove, but all schools across um, the province under Mac Umbrella are doing so. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so proud and uh, not only that, but also Mac, their food bank and taking care of the most vulnerable, not only just in the Muslim community minister, but uh, across the board. And this is the beauty about Mac. They, they, even though it says Muslim Association of Canada, but they are for everyone. And, and this is exactly what I always love to highlight. And this goes to show you that we are truly Canadian and Ontarians. And yes, maybe it's like Muslim Association of Canada, but we are for everyone. So um, uh, with that, honestly, thank, thank you once again uh, to Mac for, uh, for having me and the minister. And, and I'm really looking forward for the, the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Thank you, thank you so much. So um, I think we'll uh, jump right into the questions actually. So uh, how about we have a uh, first question from uh, Farzana Magani and she's from our Toronto chapter. So go ahead, Farzana. Um, hi, Minister, it's an honor to be able to speak to you today. Um, a priority for your ministry is to work with groups to train women and youth for rewarding careers. You, re you recently announced a $560,000 investment with the YMCA to lead training. As Leila mentioned, uh, MAC employs over a thousand people. And since the wave of Syrian refugees to Canada in 2016, the prolonged nature of the crisis has become more prominent with family settlement and employment in Canada. Many families have lost fathers, uh, husbands, sons in the war, and the women have faced additional social obstacles to find employment in Canada. Many face the challenge of language barriers while facing difficulties in actively seeking employment because of childcare responsibilities and while facing the need to support their families financially. Through Max Al Huda weekend schools, MAC has created hundreds of job opportunities for women in, in the teaching profession. However, in particular, we advanced the program to support many Syrian women who have come to Canada as refugees. We've developed a training program to prepare and support teachers and administrative staff in their ability to join the weekend schools as contributing members of the faculty. Before COVID, Al Huda schools hired over 600 part-time teachers and has empowered hundreds of Syrian women to enter the Canadian workforce. How can MAC work with your ministry to access funding to make these types of program take these types of programs to a new level and help that important segments of our community ready for jobs in Ontario. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful question. And, uh, you know, thanks again to Mac for for everything you're doing to support, you know, these these families, many with uh, young children, as, as you referenced. So thank you uh, for that. One of the things I, I should mention um, to everyone recently, uh, our ministry at labor training and skills development has had, um, all of the immigration, uh, programs, uh, language training, uh, refugee resettlement uh, programs, um, the provincial nominee program all moved, uh, to our ministry. Um, so we'll be, you know, rolling out, uh, programs, um, to help newcomers to, to Ontario. I, I will say that the one program uh, that we're going to be accepting applications very soon and and your types of training projects fit really nicely there. It's skills development fund. 
And we're set to announce in the next month or six weeks, a, a new opening. Um, so we're actually reaching out to associations, to employers, to um, training providers to come to the government with innovative solutions. So we're not just going to universities and colleges, we're actually going out to uh, associations like Mac, for example, and, you know, you submit a proposal to us and we'll look at it and um, potentially we'll, we'll partner. But th this is a priority for me. I'm, I just believe so strongly that good, meaningful jobs uh, change lives. They strengthen our, our families and build stronger communities. And it's a full concerted effort to really help those that um, are struggling or those who uh, are looking for more uh, meaningful, better jobs. Thank, Thank you, Minister. You. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry. We have our next question. Actually, comes from um, from uh, Asif Manzoor, and he's actually our Waterloo chapter head. Good afternoon, Minister. Thank you for joining us today. It's really a pleasure to uh, meet you virtually. Uh, my name is Asif Manzoor. I'm a director of product management in an aerospace company in Kitchener, Waterloo region. Uh, our industry, as you know, is going through a bit of rough time, uh, but that's not my question. Um, so Kitchener Waterloo region in general, as you know, is, is geared uh, fantastically for IT, uh, IT sector in general. Uh, but in terms of manufacturing, we've got two, two main challenges. One is we're neighboring with states such as Ohio on one side, states like Michigan that offer very lucrative incentive for companies to station themselves there, whereas we don't have that advantage in Ontario. So my first part of the question is, is your government uh, thinking of something in, along those lines to, to make it more lucrative for the companies to set themselves up here to have more CapEx projects uh, into their branches that are in Ontario and Kitchener Waterloo in particular? And the second part of the question is in terms of training. I know you touched a little bit of that um, to Farzana's question. In terms of training, with COVID hitting and our industry going through a lot of uh, rough rides, we're seeing that a lot of the old timers, people with, with very specific skill sets are either retiring mm -hmm. or their, their jobs are impacted because of COVID. And my worry is when we do bounce back, uh, they may not be in the job market anymore. So this is a time for us where we now need to train people who can do these hands-on skill trade type work for every industry uh, and in particular for aerospace. Do you have any programs, any, any thoughts in mind to support the manufacturing sector in that, in that regard? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. And it's great to uh, meet you virtually tonight as well. You're getting a little bit closer to my home, which is near London. And uh, so it's great to have a fellow, uh, colleague and, and someone from Southwestern Ontario uh, on the call tonight. Uh, so two things uh, on this, we have recently launched, and it's funny you mentioned Ohio because that's where the idea came from, um, an agency called Invest Ontario. And it's the government's committed $400 million uh, to this agency. And it is all about helping companies that are here uh, expand, but also recruit companies uh, to Ontario. So it, it really will be a, a one-stop shop for government supports, uh, you know, a concierge service. If you need to hook up natural gas to your manufacturing facility, if you need to buy industrial land, uh, tax credits, it's, it's a one-stop shop just exactly for what you're, you're talking about. Um, so that will be uh, up and running very, very soon. I know they've formed uh, the board of directors and, and it's becoming uh, operational. But it's really interesting. The premier uh, was down uh, in Ohio and was talking to the governor down there and was seeing how they were very successful in recruiting companies, in particular, uh, a number of uh, uh, advanced manufacturers from Ontario and, and agri-food businesses like greenhouses, for example, but they're very, very aggressive and it's a very nimble organization with only 50 or 60 people. And that's what we're trying to duplicate here. Instead of going through, you know, I, I think Minister Vic Fidelli says in the Ministry of Economic Development uh, and Jobs in Ontario, there's like seven or 800 people. 
So we want to get to more of a private sector mentality. So that's the first thing. Secondly, uh, you're right. We, we have a huge skills shortage uh, here in Ontario. And you mentioned the aging uh, demographics. One in three journey persons today in the skilled trades is over the age of 55. Yet the, in the average age of an apprentice is 29. So there's this really big gap and it. It really is a looming crisis that's going to hit uh, the province. So, you know, we often think of skilled trades workers in, in construction. The data shows in Ontario, we're going to be short uh, 100,000 skilled trades workers in construction. But you were referencing, you know, manufacturing and, and factories. There was a survey done about two or three months ago and 60% of uh, manufacturers in Ontario uh, are looking to hire people, but they can't, they can't find people. And they're looking to hire two or more in each of these locations. So there's a huge opportunity. So a number of things we're doing on the skilled trades front specifically, we're going to introduce the skilled trades uh, as early as grade one. Uh, we're going to actually be sending in recruiters. Um, I'm sending them in from our ministry uh, in September. Hopefully schools are back uh, to normal. Um, uh, recruiters are going to go into schools and actually compete against university recruiters that go in. So, you know, in, in our area, it might be the Western recruiters that are going into high schools, but we also want to just so kids understand what the pathways are into the trades. I mean, many of them will say to me, I know to become a lawyer, I know to become a doctor or a banker, but I have no idea how to become uh, an electrician or a steam fitter or whatever, whatever the trade is. So there, there is a problem. And then lastly, our ministry undertook uh, a lot of research around this to, to build our plan uh, a couple of years ago. And our education system in Ontario was built on kids making decisions uh, in grade 12, what, what career path they wanted to go into. Now for me, it was grade 13 when I was there or OAC. But when we did this research, we found out very clearly that kids were making decisions in grade seven or eight. So hence why we're introducing the trades as early as grade one and, you know, STEM, STEM education as well. So a lot of changes have been uh, made. And um, I guess lastly, two, two, two things actually, because I'm really excited about one, the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, uh, known as OEAP, which has been in the publicly funded schools for a while. Um, we've just begun uh, partnering with independent schools uh, to introduce that in independent schools because we know there's 150,000 kids in, in private schools across the province. We have a, a massive skills gap. We need to be offering these programs uh, to those kids as well. So that's something that I just did actually a, a month ago, which will be a huge boost for uh, independent schools. And then lastly, we're going to, uh, starting next year, we're going to have kids getting their apprenticeship hours while they're in secondary school, in high school. So instead of, you know, a lot of kids do go to university and then they decide they want to go into the trades afterwards. This will, I guess, open up the exciting opportunities that are available in the trades. And we need that average age of an apprentice that's 29 today to, to come down uh, to, to a much younger age. So there's a lot of things uh, happening, but it, it is really exciting. But it, it seems to be the single biggest thing I hear from employers. They just they really struggle to find skilled workers. And I, I think government has a, a big role uh, to play in that. MPP Khalid, I don't know if I can turn it over to you. Uh, now you may have a few things. You've got a great background in, uh, in technology as well. No, absolutely, uh, Minister. And uh... See, one thing that uh, we as a government, when we came into power, the very first thing that actually coming from a technology background, uh, but the hell out of me was the fact that we were still, uh, the governments were still using Excel sheets. And if you wanted to find something, uh, they had to go through hundreds and hundreds of uh, pages of Excel sheet. So I think the one of the things that Premier had always said was that he just wanted us centralize everything and, and make it easy for not only for, for the government, but also for, uh, uh, you know, businesses out there so that when they are communicating with each other, uh, we are not wasting time. Like 
for I, and I know Minister and I have talked about this, such as fax machines. I mean, you know, we we got rid of fax machines because it's just, you know, when we talk about saving, this is what we are talking about. And uh, one thing I know that uh, both uh, Premier and Minister uh, they're always talking about is is the fact that the faster we come out of this uh, COVID and uh, the faster we're gonna be on track towards the uh, recovery of our, of our economy. And what minister just talked about uh, the, um, the programs uh, under his ministry, those programs are gonna take our province into a whole new level. And, uh, and I'm really excited to, to see uh, those, uh, those program actually taking into effect and uh, us, uh, our province getting into a recovery more as soon as possible. And maybe if I could close, I, I'm really sorry, I do have to uh, to jump off. Um, I, I think, you know, I always try to see the, the light and, and the positive um, future that that is ahead of us. Obviously, COVID-19 has been devastating for many of our friends and family members in, in many different ways. Um, I mean, I think the last I heard 200 or 250,000 people um, have actually lost their jobs, many, you know, in restaurants and tourism and, and cultural uh, uh, industries. But the good news is that there's still many, many hundreds of thousands of opportunities out there. Uh, the Conference Board of Canada did a study. Now, this was prior to COVID-19. It said every day in Ontario, 200,000 jobs are going unfilled. The good news is that number is actually still about the same. So if we can help these people that have been displaced because of COVID, had their hours reduced, give them short, during, uh, short uh, duration training for a job that's actually in demand, like in advanced manufacturing, then I think the good news is for those people, a lot of the jobs that are waiting for them are actually paying them more than what they're making now. So it's just, it's connecting, you know, those people with the training with an employer and really, in essence, that's what our ministry is 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 working on, and um, I think uh, we're going to have a lot of success at that. Thank you so much, uh, Minister Monti. I mean, we it's such an honor to have you with us uh, today. We understand you're an extremely busy person, so we don't want to you know, hold you for too much longer. But uh, again, a big thanks for all your support, and uh, we hope you you know have a an amazing uh, day today and just uh, we really hope to see what uh, what comes next especially with this pandemic well thank you so much I, I i love mac you're doing a fantastic work thank you uh, mpp khalid for uh, your friendship and, and your support and i i promise you we're working uh, every single day on uh, getting mosques reopened uh, safely you have done an incredible job um actually because of working closely with mac i've been able to uh, visit uh, many mosques uh, across uh, the province and I've seen the, the great work you've done uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I've got all the faith in the world uh, in you and I've always said at Places of Worship, I mean uh, Places of Worship care more about their congregations and their uh, attendees than than anyone else. So I know you're doing great work and Cleet and I will continue to advocate on your behalf. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, now we still have uh, MPP Khalid. I don't know if you want to uh, just uh, share with us with us a few uh, thoughts or a few words, um, you know, just with the community. Uh, no, if, uh, honestly, like Jazakallah Khair. And uh, I know Ben is still here. So, uh, you know, we are still happy to take some of the questions. And uh, but uh, truly, I am so, so happy to see the great work that Mac is doing, uh, especially with the Papo Clinic. I know Brother Khalid uh, and I, I think we uh, talk almost every day. Uh, every think, night. Uh, every <laughs> night, actually. Uh, I, sometimes, honestly, like three, four times a day we are talking. <laughs> like I'm calling it, Brother Khalid, is everything okay? All good? <laughs> Vaccines are, nobody is popping up too many, <laughs> you know, vaccine shots. But this goes to show you the partnership. Yes. And this goes to show you that, you know, how, um, this government is uh, honestly looking at, at things from a different angle and trying to make sure that uh, we are truly a, a government for everyone. And, you know, and just as 
this pop-up clinic is a prime example um, that you know this this goes to show you that we we are here to work with you all sorry am i am i hearing myself but um but yeah i mean if are there if there are any other questions we are uh, happy to, to to take those questions i may put uh, ahmed uh, atia on a hot seat as well too because he is like a semi government individual <laughs> as well too being part of the uh, people police services board uh, any questions in regards to police services <laughs> ahmed will be answering those questions today <laughs> Thank you, thank you. We'll continue. We'll continue the conversation as long as we're we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So uh, Ben uh, Ben sent us uh, saying if we have the, the difficult ministry questions, we can send it and they uh, we can send it to them their way and they can uh, get us responses and we continue the conversation after. But uh, since we since we have you typically uh, and we have uh, Ben on Ben on as well, uh, we, why don't we just. Uh, open the floor for uh, uh, anybody if you have any additional comments or uh, or easy questions not not the too difficult questions sure yeah i mean i'm happy to to address uh, the questions no problem i don't know tariq uh, from london or uh, waqas uh, our neighbor here miss saga anybody wants to go ahead uh, i i can go just uh, assalamu alaikum everybody um Tariq uh, Qasim from London. Um, we actually had a chance to meet uh, Minister uh, McNaughton and Ben last year at the Eid uh, Drive-In at the McNoor Gardens land on South Dillon Wonderland. Ben, you probably uh, recall that. It was a very successful event. So uh, it's, it's nice to see you again. Um, you know, the question I was going to ask and, and, and you know, we don't have to answer it here, but, the, the, you know, we're, we're curious about... Um, uh, equitable access to uh, the skills development fund. You know, curious on the back end how uh, decisions are going to be made as far as distributing and um, uh, uh, granting access through the applications to the fund and, and ensuring that there's an equitable process, you know, uh, from diverse uh, backgrounds, um, uh, from a gender perspective, um, you know, socioeconomic, uh, and, and all kinds of diverse um, lenses. And so really that's just, uh, you know, if, not necessarily a question, but just as a comment as well, that that's an important um, aspect that we feel will be important in, um, in defining the success of the Skills Development Fund. Thank you, uh, Tarek. It's great to connect again. And I, I agree. <laughs> very important to have, uh, have those pieces at, in consideration when applying to the fund. Uh, the minister mentioned that there's actually a second round for, uh, there were two rounds for this uh, development fund and that should be coming online in the next couple of months. So I'm more than happy to share the information to access that so that we can start getting more applications and for that our government committed uh, well over tens of millions of dollars for the first round alone. And I can assure you uh, there were hundreds of applications and I know there are numerous recipients of that fund, all from a diverse uh, uh, part of, you know, there were many faith groups, for example, uh, different uh, faith recipients, uh, different uh, recipients advocated for gendered issues and uh, spanning all across the, the geography of our, our beautiful province, our home of Ontario. So. Uh, that diversity of you know intake is, is so important, but also the output of that is very important as well, because these uh, targeted skills uh, development programs are are addressing so many different niches of the overall economy, and our ministry is certainly uh, sensitive to that. So I definitely uh, I hope that helps answer your question. And I am definitely going to take that comment back as uh, feedback to our ministry. And yeah, abso absolutely, Ben. Thank you for that. It's also and if I may just quickly add, and Ben, you can keep me honest over here. Uh, in terms of uh, the immigration portfolio coming uh, under the, the Ministry of, of uh, Labor, this goes to show you that how we are looking at the collaboration part. Because what we are looking at is that, okay, if we need uh, these... Uh, certain sectors, individuals uh, in our province, 
then uh, you know it's easy for us to work with our federal uh, counterparts and and try to to find uh, suitable individuals who can actually come rather than having two separate ministries and uh, you know the, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is asking for or looking for so i think bringing uh, both ministries under one umbrella is going to actually make this whole process more efficient uh, ben i don't know if you want to comment on on this part thank you uh, uh mpp rashid i i agree it's uh great that all the files have been consolidated in uh, uh, one place and the minister's vision with uh, these files is to continue to serve uh, the vulnerable and, and that includes newcomers and ensuring that there is access to employment but that supports are robust and uh, intact for for newcomers as they settle as they you know undertake language training I know a lot of these uh, you know, parts of, of moving from one place to another can be very uh, difficult and hard uh, when you're adjusting. And our minister is sensitive to those, uh, as am I, and we're looking forward to serving immigrants in, in this regard as well. So uh, I completely agree, sir. Great, thank you so much, uh, Ben and MPP Rashid for uh, jumping in with the questions. We have a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, so I think we can have uh, Sara Ateya, who is uh, from the Mississauga chapter. Hello, everyone, and Salaam Alaikum. I'm just going to build on some of the conversation that's been uh, happening so far. So as we all know, uh, COVID-19 has really taken a toll on Ontario's economy. So what's the plan to boost the economy and uh, once in full recovery, um, what's the plan to encourage immigration of skilled workers and professionals to Ontario? I can take the first part uh, of the question, Ben. Is that okay? Awesome. So, uh, so, so Sarah, I mean, our, yeah, to be very honest, the the answer to this is for us to get uh, back uh, on on track in terms of the economic recovery as fast as possible. That's why you have seen that um, in our uh, recent budget, we are investing almost uh, like millions and millions of dollars in different programs, such as like, for, for example, our small businesses. Um, the provincial government is giving small businesses grant just so that they can uh, survive this, uh, this pandemic. As we all know that this has been uh, a, a huge impact on, on our business community. And, and not only that, but also what we are doing is, as a government is investing money in, uh, in projects that, that are gonna create jobs. Because I think uh, like, for example, construction projects, for example, uh, transit projects, uh, these are the projects where we're gonna see more job growth and this is gonna help us uh, grow our economy and, and definitely investment coming into our province. Um, but just for the second part, I'm sure Ben uh, will, uh, will address the immigration side. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Sarah, and for your comments, uh, MPP Rashid. The uh, opportunity for immigration is, uh, is important. Uh, the minister has managed the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program over the last uh, year or so. And while we're very excited uh, that all the moving pieces have kind of come into one place, the OIMP program is an area that we seek to continue to improve on as well. Most recently, we transformed the system into uh, the expression of interest system. So before the model is kind of a first come first serve uh, way of selecting uh, nominations, uh, applicants, nominating applicants uh, for permanent residency. And we, saw an issue with that because it didn't really help applicants as they were trying to get into the program. It put a lot of stress on trying to get in at certain times and then there would be stream crashes and that didn't uh, help us serve our customer service mandates. So we transformed the system so that uh, applicants may create a profile and then that profile can be made at any time and that'll be entered into what's known as the expression of interest pool. This profoundly changes how we select uh, nominations so that we improve customer service, eliminate the stream crashes and the stress that 
is experience for applicants. So this will help us, you know, select uh, applicants who are, are able to, to do work that best aligns with their skill set that they've worked so hard in, in their home country to, to develop. And this will also help our recovery efforts as well by fulfilling uh, key uh, gaps that are present in the labor economy. Again, thank you both. Uh, so our next question is from uh, Brother Abdul Latif Bakbak, and he is our uh, OGS school principal. So I'll give you the floor. Um, thank you for uh, for the opportunity. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see uh, some of the uh, talk today from uh, uh, the, the minister about the uh, the, uh, the skill development at schools. Uh, that's really getting to the root of the problem, hopefully, and uh, and trying to work with uh, with the uh, education system and with the schools, uh, try to prepare and close the gap for the lack of uh, skilled workers. This is really a great initiative. What I wish here is uh, is the uh, is the equitable support for uh, religious and independent schools and in receiving funds and uh, in, in these programs and and in the STEM development programs uh, and uh, all areas that uh, deal with the with the with the subject matter. Uh, we've been suffering from the uh, and inequity of of, uh, of treatment in terms of funding to the uh, religious and independent schools. So I hope the uh, through this program we can uh, be uh, we can be getting our share uh, of funding and uh, enable our student to to be developed uh, equitably like uh, the public school uh, uh, students. And you want to comment on? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, MPP Rashid. Uh, thank you, sir, for your for your feedback. That's. Uh, that's helpful. I'm happy to take that back to our uh, to our ministry. Uh, MPP Rashid, did you want to follow up with any other comments? Or? No, I just want to say that uh, one thing I know that Minister uh, Monty is a, is a huge advocate of uh, you know faith based schools, and uh, he's always uh, a, a true example is uh, his efforts of uh, bringing. Uh, businesses to come and, and support schools like uh, Olive Grove uh, during COVID-19 and uh, supporting with PPEs. Uh, so I think you will see that uh, programs like Skill Trades uh, definitely, and I have heard him many, many times talking about in, in the house that there will be definitely a, a big support for, um, for our uh, education sector, because that's the, that's, that is where our, our key focus is going to be because I always say that the, we are here for the next generation. And I think we have to empower our next generation to make good decisions. Um, you know, I, we always talk about this that uh, I, I'm, I myself, I can say that I always say to my kids that, oh, you, you want to be, you have to be a doctor or an engineer. And, uh, but sometimes we don't say that, we don't see that there is a lot of, big value in uh, being in a skilled trade profession as well too. So I think this is what the minister is focusing on, on educating people that, you know, your kids can also be uh, in skilled trades and, and can do as, uh, as great as, uh, as anybody out there. So I think this is one of the key messages, the messages that he's trying to uh, deliver as well too. And I, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of partnership with uh, schools such as uh, Olive Grove and, and other schools out there. All right, thank you so much uh, to uh, Minister McDonald and to MPP Kali, uh, Rashid and to, uh, to Ben for joining us tonight um, and everyone else uh, that's uh, also, uh, you know, that's tuned in. Um, you know, we had such a great discussion and uh, uh, we encourage and welcome uh, everyone to make a donation to MAC so that we're able to continue bringing these amazing educational programs, uh, youth programs, to be able to support our mosques and our centers, uh, especially since we're, uh, we're hoping to serve the community across uh, Canada through online programs. Uh, so you can donate through macnet.ca uh, slash donate. 
And I just want to remind everyone that we actually have a lot of programs throughout uh, the week. Uh, you can check out our social media accounts uh, to find out more about it. Um, so Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, so on Friday, we have the Mac News Show. Then we're, we also have uh, every day for during Ramadan, we have the Mac Daily Show. It's 30 minutes before Iftar time and it's live on YouTube. Uh, sorry, uh, live on Facebook. Uh, we have the youth shows, uh, youth junior daily shows and competitions. And we have a lot of uh, local events um, happening up across our chapters uh, across Canada. Um, and if I could actually just call on somebody to make the, uh, actually call on uh, Brother Waqas actually to make the, the closing dua. So Brother Waqas is actually the uh, Mac Mississauga uh, chapter head. So Brother Waqas, just for our closing dua, thank you. Thank you very much, and a uh, uh, pleasure to have uh, all of you as well. Uh, it's always a pleasure to see my colleagues uh, from across the country as well. Um, so uh, I, I pray that uh, Allah uh, accepts our fast, uh, accepts our deeds on, the, on, this, uh, on this day, and guides us to do what is right and what is good, and, uh, and uh, makes us amongst the, the, the righteous, and empowers us, and uh, uh, gives us the ability to, to help others in our community as well. Uh, thank you very much thank you everyone